I'm Dave Swift, and I review a new lifetime deal from AppSumo every single day of the week. Now, I get quite detailed in my reviews. I cover every single feature and tell you what I like and what I dislike. That's great for many, but not everyone has the time. So the Taco Truck Roundup was born, where I take my full length reviews and break them down into a two or three minute conversation. It's a conversation because I'm also featuring your comments from those full length reviews, and I can update my reviews based on things I may have learned since creating the videos. So if you just wanna keep up with everything that's new at AppSumo, you're in the right place. This is the Taco Truck Roundup. What's going on, everybody? Dave Swift here from ClientAmp.com. We've got a great show for you. Four brand new deals, including the LTD that broke the internet. Just five bucks seems to be the right price point for a lot of you. That is Rambox. We're going to get into that in a moment. I've also got a cloud-based video editing tool that actually is quite good. In fact, come to think of it, all of the deals in today's roundup are ones that I would genuinely recommend. It's been a long time since that has happened. There is a project management tool called Blue. Really, really good stuff. We'll get into that in a moment. And then we'll close out the show with a internet radio station. I've already created mine. You can create your own as well. I'll show you how, or you can just listen to mine. I'll drop a link for that down below. I would say the internet radio station one, I actually have the most updates on. So stay tuned to the end for that if you were kind of on the edge about it before. I think I skipped some pretty important features. So hang on, we'll get to that in a moment. But first, there's some housekeeping I need to do over at AppSumo. So I'm on the AppSumo homepage here. Let's go over to software. You're gonna see that they dropped three brand new deals today. This is the 21st of Wednesday. Usually they don't drop anything new on a Wednesday. Well, these are actually deals that have previously been on AppSumo, but they came back with a code limited deal. You can see they're all roughly 25% claimed. Now, the idea here is that there's only 400 codes and once they're gone, they're gone. So if you wanted to grab Nitro SEO, Cast Magic, or Merlin, this is your reminder, your alert that you have the opportunity to do so because I know not everyone checks AppSumo every single day. Now, related to that, there is one more code limited deal that you're not gonna see if you just go to the AppSumo homepage or sort by latest. Here it is latest, you're not gonna see it here. The deal that I'm talking about is called Rambox and it has people going crazy. In fact, I can even search here Rambox and it does not show up. Now, if you click my link down below, for some reason that works and it takes you to the correct URL. Otherwise, you literally need to know the URL by heart. There's no way to find it that I can tell on AppSumo's homepage. So here's the product page for Rambox. It does exist. Again, if you wanna check it out, I've got the link down below. By the way, this is not a sponsored video, so that's the best way to support the channel. And as always, thank you to everybody who has already been clicking my links. It is greatly appreciated. So Rambox, what is it? Five bucks, should you grab it? It's already 33% claimed. As I mentioned, it is a limited availability deal. Well, to be blunt, yeah, five bucks, definitely worth it. Go grab a code. But if you wanna know more, I'll tell you right now. And I also have a 20 minute tutorial on how it works. That's obviously linked down below as well. So Rambox is a browser, but it's not meant to be your primary browser. Instead, it's a place where you can take all of the web apps that you live in all day long. So Notion, Airtable, Gmail, whatever you're using, you can offload those into this dedicated web browser that keeps everything organized for you. They use something called workspaces so that you can group apps together that you use frequently. They even have nice window layouts so that you can keep everything exactly as you want to have a nice dashboard of a set of apps that you use frequently. There's also multiple profile supports. So if you need to, for example, switch between multiple Google accounts, you can do so very easily without fiddling with any settings or going back and forth inside of the Gmail settings. Basically, this is a way to improve your focus and stay in the right frame of mind. And when it's time to switch over to baseball mode, you can do that as well. It supports extensions, but not all extensions. We're basically talking about password managers as well as grammar tools here. For me, I'm not gonna do my primary work web design inside of Rambox. I would go back to the regular browser that I use, Firefox or Safari, something like that. But if you're gonna be living in those web apps, it's nice to get that separation so that you're not easily distracted by things like social media. 
Overall, people are pretty pumped up about Rambox. We've got Steven here saying this seems like an easy way to keep everything together. Another commenter says, OMG, Dave, this is perfect for my stock trading with charts, quotes, feds, and news. Absolutely brilliant. And then I got a bunch of other people asking if it was gone already because they can't find it on AppSumo. That's what the links in the description are for. Definitely check those out. It not only helps me out, but it helps you out so you can find stuff faster. Overall, Rambox is definitely worth the five bucks it's currently available for. So if you're watching this when it's still available, definitely head over and grab your copy right away. Next up is FlexClip, an online video creation and editing platform that has some AI powered features. So the main things here are that it has a really great templating system so that you can find a great starting point for your videos. It makes it clean and easy to get started. I also found the editing interface fairly intuitive. Now I do have a background in editing videos, but sometimes these online creation tools are a little bit convoluted and difficult. I did not feel that way with FlexClip at all. The AI powered tools were pretty meaningfully good. I felt like they actually would help people create videos from scratch. There's an AI video function where you can just upload an article or paste in some text and it will generate the entire video for you. You can do some tweaking of course, but it gives you a really solid place to start from. The main downside here is that it is a cloud-based editor. So if you have a super powerful computer, you're not really gonna be taking advantage of all of that GPU and CPU power that you could use if you used an offline editor, something like Final Cut, Premiere, DaVinci Resolve, any of those are really gonna handle your system resources much better, but they're also more professional and difficult tools to learn how to use. I think FlexClip is great for social media marketers, people that are creating short form content regularly, but don't have any aspirations to learn real video production. Most of the comments were fairly positive here, but I wanna highlight maybe some of the negative ones. Phantom here says that it's sad that it's only for one user, not good for teams or businesses, or someone who wants to outsource video creation to a VA. And for that, I'd say, well, why not just give the account to your VA? Why, why do you need the account? Like I, I've gotten more done since I've completely outsourced the editing to a remote worker than when I had to log in and do everything myself. So I, I don't know it's a pretty good deal. So just buy an account for each person and then they can submit your work for you and you can review it. I think that's a completely viable solution. You could also password share. I don't see anything wrong with that. If you want to be able to log in and make small tweaks to the video, there's really no reason you couldn't do that either. So there's ways around this, but yeah, maybe it'd be nicer if there was a full built-in user management system. Next up was Trey Picardo, who says, great work, dude. Looks good, but a bit pricey next to other video editors like Wondershare Filmora with an LTD option. So the main thing with Wondershare Filmora is that uh, the fact that it's, it's not really gonna be a lifetime deal. If you want those AI-based features, you have to pay for their monthly plan. There's also some drama kind of swirling around with lifetime deal owners where they tried to take the lifetime deals away and then they had to give them back, but you're not going to get all of those reoccurring AI editing credits. So I think, uh, in my opinion, FlexClip still has the best deal here. Overall, I give FlexClip a 7.7 .7 out of 10. I think it's a very high quality tool. I'm still going to be partial to offline editors, but uh, if you are an online editing type of person, definitely check this one out. Next up, maybe my favorite deal of the week, which was Blue. This is a project management tool. I just kind of like project management. I'm not a project manager per se. I didn't go to school for that, but I do enjoy organizing work and making sure that everything is laid out in a way that you know workers can understand and get their job done efficiently. So Blue really caught me off guard with how full featured it was. Every time I thought, yeah, this is nice, but it's not gonna do this, Blue did it. It really knocked my socks off. All of that, and it has some AI integrations for things like summarizing tasks and tagging things. So this is really a full-featured and forward-thinking project management tool. Of course, it has Kanban boards for task management, but it also has a list view if you like looking at things in lists. There's built-in chat, file storage, docs. Really, it's a whole suite of productivity. And best of all, the pricing plans are super generous. The base level tier one comes with 30 users. I can't think of another project management tool that had quite as many users. And of course you can scale this thing all the way up. I think at tier five, you get unlimited users. And with tier nine, you get 100 different companies. So you could literally offer this as a project management tool to clients. The only real downsides that I saw with Blue are that it was a little bit sketchy when I was previewing the files and 
that was about it. Like everything else worked really, really good. Now, don't get me wrong. It could definitely use a UX designer to come in and just refresh everything, but it's not fundamentally broken in terms of UX. Everything is exactly where you'd think it should be. It really just needs maybe a, a UI designer to make things beautiful. But the experience is all very good. Web Stylist is back this week with another comment. They say, when Microsoft crept into Trello and jacked up the gold membership pricing on his 544 project boards, he said, done. So I don't blame them there. Although Microsoft didn't acquire Trello, that was actually Atlassian. But yeah, Trello is great. I have no problem with Trello, but it's nice to have a little bit more than just a Kanban board. Even when you compare Blue to something like Fluent Boards, well, Blue is a complete solution where Fluent Boards is a standalone product. It's actually a component of a complete solution where Fluent Boards is part of the Fluent Suite with Fluent CRM and Fluent Support. They all work together to provide that project management infrastructure. In fact, that was a question I got here from Michael wanting to know how Fluent Boards stacks up with Blue. And I said they're polar opposites, WordPress versus SaaS, a component or a plugin versus an all-in-one, just Kanban versus chat automations, Wiki, Drive, and Docs. And again, not saying that one is better than the other. They're just very different types of tools. And it's really impressive that Blue does all of this for a lifetime deal, especially at the price point it's offering. It's honestly a good deal at 10 times the price, but don't tell the founder. And our final deal of the week is Radiolize. So you can start your own cloud-based internet radio station. Now, I've always wanted to be a radio DJ since I was a young child. I don't think that job is very lucrative for many these days, but that doesn't mean you couldn't find a way to make it useful online. Now, with Radiolize, it started off a little bit rocky. I had a hard time getting set up and I think that's because there's a manual component to it or maybe just a time delay as they might actually be spinning up a VPS and installing a bunch of software because right away my server wasn't available. I couldn't access my station after making a purchase. And as an AppSumo customer, I'm used to making a purchase using the tool and not really having a delay there. But after waiting for a little bit, I did get access to my channel and I found the software to be actually fairly intuitive and very easy to get going. You upload your content, AKA music, or in my case, I did spoken word. You upload that to a playlist. Then you schedule that playlist to air in a broadcast and you're off to the races. You can literally have it auto DJ and be on 24 seven. Of course, there's also a live broadcasting feature. So maybe you're a podcaster and you want to broadcast your podcast live as you're recording it. You could do that as well. There's some pretty good listener analytics. I'm gonna show you my updated dashboard here in a moment, but there's a lot of detailed reports so you can see exactly what's going on with your station. So now that my station's been running for a few days, I just wanna show you what it looks like. You can see how many listeners we have. 236 people have checked out the radio station today, which is pretty cool. I can see the track that's currently playing right now. I've got my streams down below here and I've got links that I could share that people can use in external apps if they're using, uh, basically, I think the, the service that is powering all of this is called IceCast. So if you have an IceCast compatible player, you can share that. In my video, I just focused on these public pages, which are fine. I can see the stream page here and you'll be able to start listening right away. But there's actually more than that. If I scroll right up to the top, there is the embed widgets. I did not see this button when I was making my video. I can click right up here and now I can actually embed the player right on my own website. That is really cool because then you don't have to send everyone to that kind of random weird page. You can make a nice URL on your own website, embed the widget and you're good to go. There's actually quite a few different widgets. You can see there's the radio player. There's a history of all of the tracks that have been played. That's really cool. We can schedule, embed the schedule so people can see what shows are coming up. You can see the request links. So you can say, hey, what tracks do you want me to play next? There's a light and a dark theme. And that's basically it. There were a lot of helpful comments on this video. I wanna point out everything here that I can. Uh, this person says, Icecast and Shoutcast. Don't know if they're still around. I had a station back then. I actually think, so uh, first of all, Icecast and Shoutcast, as far as I can understand, are just like protocols for broadcasting on the internet, for doing internet radio. I think that maybe, not sure, haven't really checked into it with much detail, so certainly not accusing anyone of anything, but I think maybe that Radiolize is using a Shoutcast player, or a, excuse me, an Icecast player 
named AzuraCast. This is AzuraCast. It is free and open source software. So even if they did utilize this as kind of their foundation, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But I just wanted to point out, I think they might be using this as their foundation. You can see the left-hand sidebar here for AzuraCast, a lot of similar links. We've got the public page, we've got our playlists, our music files, our streamer DJ accounts. It's almost in the exact same order. Even the player widgets look very, very similar. But if you use software like this, you need to pay for the server to actually host it. And then you've got to maintain it. And all of that costs money. Whereas with Radialize, you can get it all for a one-time fee. Now, not everyone was in love with this idea. We've got Spread the Garden here saying that they'd have a hard time relating to wanting to listen to something that's not on demand. And I get that. You know, modern life, it's hard to like set aside time for something that's scheduled. I think more of the idea here is that it's you can have a station that you turn on and it's always playing something that you like and you don't have to think about hunting and searching for the next piece of content. I know just like with my wife, when we want to watch a show, it's we spend half the time trying to pick out the next show and then we fall asleep as soon as we put it on. So having something, a channel to just play, there's something to be said for that. Plus there's going to be like live events. So I mentioned podcasting. People that like certain podcasters might tune in every single week to listen to them podcast live because then you can engage with the show while it's actually happening. Chat rooms, not you want to actually be on the show. You just chat with them. A few other comments came up about licensing music. I think there was three or four in total, uh, basically saying that, you know, you need to make sure you have the rights to play the music. And I agree. I'm not touching that with a 10 foot pole. Every different area has different rules and laws in terms of what can be broadcast. And then the internet adds a whole other issue to that because now you're not, you know, localizing your radio station. It's available all over the world. So if you're going to play music on your radio station, talk to a lawyer, make sure you have the rights to do so, follow local laws. That's about as detailed as I want to get. However, we did have a commenter share a recently produced video that goes into a lot more detail. Radio DJ Dude is also a YouTuber and he shared his music licensing for the Internet Radio Ultimate Guide for 2024 link right here. So I definitely recommend heading over to that video, clicking on this if you want to know more about the logistics, the legalities of actually starting your own internet radio business and maybe trying to make some money off of it because it's not going to be as simple as just selling ads while you play your favorite tunes. Overall, I had a lot of fun setting up Radio Lies and I gave it a 7.8 out of 10. It's a great tool and I definitely recommend checking it out if you can think of a use case. So that's gonna do it for this week's Taco Truck Roundup. Again, I am Dave Swift from clientamp.com. Go check us out over there. We've got online courses, a free email newsletter, and you can even hire me to work on your online business. If you like this video, make sure you consider clicking the links down below before making any AppSumo purchases. You can also hit that like button and subscribe if you're new around here. And as always, I'll be hanging out in the comments. Leave me a message and you never know, you might be featured on next week's Taco Truck Roundup. That's all for today. I'll see you in the next review.